Are you ready over there, sir? Rich. Oh, you got the glasses? I stay ready so I don't got to get ready. All right. It's now time for TJ's top five, otherwise known as TJ's Big Ass Grab Bag. You have the floor, sir, on this Friday. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And like we always do at this time, kaboom. <laughs> Guess who stepped in the room? TJ here. Listen, this week... It's been crazy, right? There's so much stuff that's been going on. I could have picked anything for this grab bag, but I wanted to uh, kind of center this around an in-studio guest we had yesterday, Devon Nixon, who plays Norm Nixon in uh, Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty that we are loving right now, Chris, on HBO, right? So I've watched this, I think, three times already. You said you've watched it twice. So it just hit me, man. I want to just give you guys really quickly my top five moments from episode one of Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. All right. I think this will be funny for everyone who's watched it. Coming in at number five, Jerry West is over it. (laughs) Look, I don't Maybe it's losing to the Celtics so many times It drove him crazy Maybe it's just like He was in the position that he didn't want to be in You know, I had the pleasure of meeting Jerry West here When he came in studio a few years ago And he dropped like six F-bombs In the first two sentences And it was just like (laughs) talking to an old friend He was that comfortable And that's just how the man talks He uses a lot of colorful language I want to see I mean, we obviously know in reality where this led to but i'm looking forward to see jerry west character as this series goes on see how many more golf clubs he can snap because as we know he has a running tab with the with the clubhouse right so <laughs> jerry west losing it is just a treat so far that's my t- number five thing that i like so far uh in um the rise of the lakers dynasty coming okay. in at number four norm nixon whose son was here yesterday. Yes. Norm Nixon getting roasted at the beauty salon. (laughs) Jeff in Detroit will tell you, he'll call in all the time and he'll talk about barbershop talk. My boy Benny Blades right now, my barber, he's watching. He knows in the barbershop, I've been known to throw gasoline on some conversations just to get two people fighting with one another. And getting roasted is one thing, right? Everyone's kind of gotten roasted in their life. But getting just flamed by a bunch of women while you're getting a mani-pedi, like, come on, this was that was a great moment, even though Norm Nixon claims he's never gotten a, a pedicure. But and two of the funniest lines from that scene, Chris, when the one woman was like, when you came in here, we thought you was the mailman, gave you a gave you a stamp and everything. And then she told him, if you lose your minutes, maybe magic can pull your little ass out the hat. And just which is set great. Norm Nixon so out of the beauty salon. So that was that was something really funny. Barbershop humor is is raw, man. And uh Norm caught a little bit of it right there. So that was my fourth thing that I really appreciated and liked about winning time. Uh, Coming in at number three, Norm Nixon moment again. He had Magic Johnson playing one-on-one at an all-white party wearing dress shoes. Like, (laughs) I mean, what are the chances this happened? You ever try to do anything in dress shoes? You try to walk in dress shoes? Those things are slippery. You'll snap your ankle. You'll tear your ACL. And plus, they're dressed in all-white. You're not trying to get your all-white outfit dirty, like basketball prints on it and stuff. And Norm Nixon was wearing a fox coat. It was ankle length. It was fox. It was great. I just love the fact that those two were out there playing one-on-one, dressed in all white and and dress shoes. That was crazy. That's my third moment. Uh, Coming in at number two, Dr. Buss's savviness when it came to dealing with Jack Kent Cook and Magic Johnson. You know, there was the scene where he goes to Jack Kent Cook's house and he tells the story about the swan and how it looks calm, but it's like kicking for its life under the water and... uh, you know, and he bought this team for 67 million, 15.6 of which he did not have. Imagine <laughs> not having 15.6 million dollars to buy something and going, ah, don't worry, we'll get it. John that, C. Riley looks he, just like yeah, him. Just yeah. like that him. was great. They, they have really. They yeah. nailed it Made with that one, right? Like Jerry Buss. And, and not only that, the way he handled Magic Johnson. Magic decides after the Norm Nixon encounter, he wants to go back to college. Dr. Buss takes him through a walk through the hallways of the forum, kind of leaves him there. Now Magic gets to see all the pictures of the stars. Oh, I accidentally walk into the locker room and there's my jersey. Now I get to step onto the forum floor and play a little hoops. He sold that perfectly. I don't know how that happened in real life. But as far as the TV show goes, that was a great part. And it just kind of showed how smart Dr. Buss was when it came to dealing with two very different type of people, right? And uh, coming in at number one, this has been bugging me out for the last couple days. A coin toss that determined the history of the NBA. When I say history, I mean history. They say Magic Johnson and Larry Bird saved the league, right? Had this coin toss 
went the other way and Magic Johnson became a Chicago Bull. How does that change basketball? There is no Showtime Lakers dynasty, correct? That would mean that my man Dr. J here, I think now in 80 and 82, instead of losing to the Lakers in the finals, now the Sixers, they go on to win NBA titles, and that changes Dr. J's perception all across the league. Plus, and then, would, plus would Michael have been a yeah, Bull? That's the next thing, Rich. Michael Jordan, he doesn't go to the Chicago Bulls if Magic yeah. Johnson's there. They're too good. Now is Michael Johnson a Dallas Maverick? Is he a San Antonio Spur? Do the Sixers pick him instead of Barkley? Does he fall to the Clippers? He's not going to fall to the Clippers, but we don't know how that's going to play out. But Michael Jordan, more than likely, is not a Chicago Bull. That changes the history of the NBA over a coin toss. And those are just TJ's top five winning time moments. I'm loving this series so far. I can't wait for the rest of it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.